What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. So if you've been fishing for even a few months now, you'll probably face conditions where you'll go out one day and it's really warm, it'll be cloudy, the wind will be blowing, and the fish are going to be biting like crazy. But then the next day the temperatures suddenly drop and the clouds go away, the skies clear up, and you'll end up not catching any fish or you'll zero in your tournament and just be really frustrated because you were catching them so well the day before and then that cold weather came through and it just completely shut down your bite. So if that situation sounds familiar, it means you're fishing around cold front conditions. And cold fronts are really common and they happen every two to three weeks across the entire United States. And they change the way that bass act from day to day. And if you don't know how to adapt to cold front conditions, it can make consistently catching bass day to day really hard because these cold fronts will change the way that the bass feed, where they position on a lake, and the techniques you have to use to actually get those fish to bite. But fortunately, I'm going to show you in this video exactly how to adapt to pre-front, during front, and cold front conditions so that you can catch bass just as well in all three periods and put fish in the boat consistently every single trip. So first up, what is a cold front? And while I'm sure most of you guys know what a cold front is, I just want to explain it really quick to make sure everyone's on the same page. So I'm not a meteorologist and I'm definitely not an expert in weather, but I do know enough to teach you the basics you need to know so you can figure out how these weather conditions affect bass. And so if we take a look at the map of the United States here, you can see that there is an area on the right and left of this blue line that has different temperatures. So on the right side of this blue line, you'll have warmer temperatures. And on the left side of this blue line, you have colder temperatures. And that blue line represents a cold front that's moving across the United States. And basically a cold front is an area of cooler temperature or cooler air that's replacing warmer air. And it will cause the temperatures to drop. And there's a lot of other science behind that, but that's basically what's going on. And it doesn't really matter too much for bass fishing to know all of the details. So again, as most of you guys know, as a storm or a cold front moves through, you're going to have different weather conditions before a storm hits, during a storm, or after the storm leaves your area. And the conditions will affect bass in different ways. And so I laid out the conditions you need to look for in each of those situations, and I've labeled the three periods of a cold front as pre-front, during front, and post front. And that's the way that a lot of bass fishermen will refer to these conditions. So when we're talking about pre-front conditions, this is the time right before a storm hits or a cold front moves through. And so you'll see a quick change in temperature from warm weather and clear skies to strong winds from the south or southwest. The temperatures will still be warm as that front approaches your area, but the clouds will start to accumulate in your area and you may have some short periods of rain or showers. And then as the front or the storm reaches your area, you're going to have strong gusting winds, the temperature is going to drop suddenly, you're going to have heavy cloud cover roll in, and you may have heavy rains or thunderstorms and lightning, maybe even hail and snow depending on the area of the country you're in. And then post front conditions are when the storm or the cold front has completely passed over you and you'll be facing strong north to northwest winds first thing in the morning and then the winds will start to die down as that front gets further away from you. You also have steadily dropping temperatures and the skies will begin to clear and the clouds will begin to dissipate and you may still have a few showers first thing in the morning but then near the afternoon you'll probably just have some stronger winds and bright bluebird skies. And you may have noticed that there are two other variables I haven't talked about on this table, which is the barometric pressure and the dew point. And a lot of people ask me questions about how barometric pressure or dew point affect bass and how much do I pay attention to it. And honestly, I never look at these two variables ever. Normally I can identify whether I'm fishing in a pre-front, during front, or post-front conditions by looking at the other variables. So I don't obsess about the pressure and dew point. Okay, so as you can see, the weather changes a lot between pre-front and post-front conditions. And this changes how the bass relate to cover, the areas they like to set up in, the lures you need to throw, and how you retrieve those lures, and a lot of other factors. And people get in trouble because a lot of times they'll try to use the exact same techniques in the pre-front conditions as they do in the post-front conditions, and they'll find that they're not catching nearly as many fish in one of those two periods because they don't adapt their techniques. 
And so what I wanna do now is show you how I adapt to pre-front, during front, and post-front conditions in all four seasons of the year and show you how these conditions will affect bass differently across the year so that hopefully you can make the right adjustments to catch just as many bass in the pre-front as you do in the post-front year-round. So let's get into it. So first up, let's talk about how cold fronts affect bass in the spring. And when I'm talking about the spring, I mean the pre-spawn, the spawn, and the post-spawn. And in my opinion, cold fronts affect the bass the most in the springtime because the bass are looking to spawn for most of the spring. And they need a very specific water temperature to actually spawn in a lot of areas of the country. And these cold fronts will fluctuate the water temperature and drop the water temperature, pushing those fish away from the bank. And then as the water temperature warms up, they'll move back to the bank and the cold front will roll through, push them back off the bank. And it's kind of a circus of trying to play the weather. And so if you know how to actually adapt to all these cold fronts, you can stay with those big female bass in the spring and consistently put those really big pre-spawn and spawning bass in the boat. So first up, let's talk about pre-front conditions in the pre-spawn. And again, pre-front conditions are actually really favorable to catching bass because you have warm temperatures, cloud cover, and wind. And all three of these factors are going to make the bass really aggressive and it's going to put them up shallower and you can catch them on reaction baits, spinner baits, crank baits, jerk baits, things like that. And normally pre-front conditions are really good for catching bass pretty much year round. And again, they make the bass really active. So when I'm looking for bass in the pre-front conditions during the pre-spawn, I'm gonna be looking for places that these bass are gonna to want to move up and feed on because they're gonna to want to load up on food before they move up to spawn for two or three weeks. And these places could be secondary points in the mouths of spawning pockets, maybe a steep bank leading into a shallow or flat that has wind blowing on it, or maybe a shallow flat that has a high spot or a rock pile where those bass can move up and ambush any shad they're getting pushed around or that are feeding up on plankton that's getting thrown around by the wind. And then as the front starts to move through and you get the during front conditions, you'll sometimes have some really heavy rain or thunderstorms and lightning. And if there's any thunderstorms or lightning, I always take shelter under a boat dock and I don't risk anything. I don't try to be a hero out there and get struck by lightning and die from chasing some little green fish. So I always recommend taking shelter from thunderstorms, even if you're fishing in a tournament. But if there isn't any thunder or lightning, you can still catch some fish in the heavy rains, though I find that the bite somewhat slows down when you have really strong heavy rains in the pre-spawn, though you can still catch them. And normally I find that the fish will actually get closer to the bottom when you have really heavy rain pretty much year round. And so I'll focus on bottom baits like a crankbait or a jig, or I may throw like an umbrella rig, but maybe fish it really close to the bottom and not target those suspended bass that a lot of people like to fish in the pre-spawn. And then as the front passes through and you transition to those post-front conditions, the air temperatures are going to drop significantly and the wind is going to shift directions and start coming out of the north and the cloud cover is going to start dissipating and the skies will clear up. And a lot of people think that these post-front conditions are terrible for catching bass and the bass will shut down because of those colder temperatures, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I actually catch some of my biggest bags of fish in the post-front conditions because you still have that wind which is going to keep those fish active and what will happen a lot of times is that those fish that were feeding up shallow on those shallow secondary points or on those shallow flats are going to move off to the first deep water they can find and you'll look for drops off the end of points or a steeper bank that's close to a spawning flat, places where the fish can get out of that colder temperature and find some little bit deeper water. And this will actually congregate the bass in those areas and you'll find a lot of big female bass stacked up in a small area. And if you can relocate to that group of pre-spawn bass that moved off to that steeper drop, you can normally load the boat because those fish are still gonna be actively feeding due to the wind. And you just have to put a bait down there basically and you can catch a 15 to 20 pound limit really fast. And the reason that post-front conditions get a bad rap is that fishermen don't adjust to the conditions that they're facing. 
instead of moving off to that first drop or that first piece of deep water away from the areas they were catching them, they'll stay up on the bank, they'll stay up shallow, fishing their spinner baits, their crank baits down the bank, and hope that there's some fish that still stayed up there. And while you may catch a couple fish in those conditions, it's gonna be a lot harder to catch a number of fish and you may actually end up zeroing. And so I know that whenever I'm fishing post front conditions in the pre-spawn, I'm going to move away from the areas where I caught them in the pre-front conditions to the first drop or that first piece of deep water and fish baits that are going to be working deeper in the water column like a flat side crank bait or an umbrella rig or a football jig and try to find those fish that are moving away from the bank looking for that deeper water and normally you can catch some giant bass in the pre-spawn if you can adapt properly. So next up let's talk about how these frontal conditions will affect bass during the spawn. And this is one of the toughest times of year to adapt to cold front conditions because these fish are going to be up shallow, they're going to be actively looking to spawn, and when a cold front passes through, it's going to interrupt their spawning cycle and kind of put them in a funk. But it's not impossible to get these fish to bite as long as you know how to make the right adjustment. So to explain how to adapt to these frontal conditions during the spawn, I'm actually going to use an example from an Arkansas Junior State Tournament I won back when I was 16 years old on Lake Dardanelle. And I actually don't have any footage from that tournament unfortunately, but I do have some footage of me fishing the exact same pattern on another pool of the Arkansas River years later. And so as far as the conditions went for this Arkansas Junior State Tournament, before the tournament, we had pre-front conditions, and the day before of practice, there was strong winds, cloud cover, and warm weather. And so the fish were up shallow feeding. You could catch them on spinner baits, chatter baits, pretty much anything you threw, and the fish were just chewing. And I heard of multiple people catching 20-pound bags, and everyone thought they were just going to crush them. And during that practice day, I actually found some fish spawning back up in some shallow pockets and I was catching some three and four and five pounders flipping a black neon tube. But I knew that the conditions were going to change overnight and there was actually a cold front that was going to come through and drop the temperatures from 60 and 70 degrees down to 30 and 40 degrees overnight and I knew that that was going to kill that shallow bite that the guys were getting on those spinner baits and the chatter baits and crank baits and it was going to push those fish a little bit further off the bank and so I actually planned for that in my practice day and I looked for areas that the bass could spawn on that were really close to deeper water and I actually found some really good stretches of riprap bank that had deep water really close by that had rock that was holding heat and actually had fish spawning up in some grass down riprap. And I knew that even though I was catching fish up really shallow on this riprap in practice, the fish were probably going to pull three or four or five feet off the bank and sit down in the actual riprap and I could catch them flipping this tube and working it away from the bank and fish a little bit deeper than the way that most of the other guys were fishing. So the next day during the tournament, the front had fully passed through and we were dealing with post-front conditions where we had a strong north wind and it was clear skies and really cold, like 37, 38 degrees to start the morning. And so I rolled over to the first area I was going to fish and it was a pretty well-known area and there was four or five boats in there. And every single boat was running down the bank with a spinner bait or crankbait or chatterbait, burning down the rocks, fishing the same way they caught them in practice. And I actually got there behind a few guys and started fishing down the bank behind two different boats. But instead of fishing a reaction bait, I picked up that black neon tube and I fished it super slow on the edge of some of the grass on this riprap and actually out in front of some of the grass in maybe four to five feet of water. And I wasn't getting very many bites, but every 30 to 45 minutes, I would catch a three or four pounder while everyone else around me was not catching a single fish. And at the end of the day, I ended up weighing 18 pounds of fish. I lost a five pounder at the boat and weighed in a 14 inches. So I should have had about 22, 23 pounds of fish if I had put that fish in the boat. And I still won the tournament by five pounds just because I adapted to those post front conditions slowed down, fished off the bank, and prepared during my practice day for those conditions, knowing that the conditions were going to change from pre-front to post-front conditions. And so as you can see, you can still catch really good fish in these conditions as long as you adapt and look for those steeper banks, look for places the fish can move off to, 
once that post front conditions roll in and again just plan for it and you can catch just as many fish and just as big a fish in both the pre front and the post front conditions. So real quick, before I move on from the spawn, I do want to talk about how cold fronts affect bass during the spawn on shallow grassy lakes, especially in California and in Florida. So on shallow grassy lakes, especially if the bass are Florida strain largemouth, the cold fronts will really affect these fish during the spawn and it will completely shut down the bite on most days. And if you've watched any of the FLW or Bassmaster Tour events on these Florida lakes like the Harris Chain, Lake Okeechobee, or even out in the California Delta, the pros normally struggle when there's cold front conditions. But the best way to actually get those cold front bass to bite during the spawn in Florida and California is to find the thickest cover you can possibly find and punch it with like a one or a one and a half ounce weight and try to fish the thickest shadiest, nastiest cover you can find in your area. And the reason that these areas are good is because they'll hold more heat and the bass can kind of escape those colder temperatures when they get under those thick grass mats or tule mats or even thick lily pad clumps. And so if you're facing cold front conditions in Florida or California and you have any kind of aquatic vegetation, just look for the thickest vegetation you can find and just fish really slow with that big weight and you're gonna be able to catch some fish. So next up we have the post spawn and the summer conditions and I'm going to roll these together because normally the bass will react the same to frontal conditions in the post spawn all the way through the beginning of the fall. So first up, just like in the spring, bass are going to feed really well in pre-front conditions in the post spawn and in the summertime. And normally they're going to be feeding up shallow on shallow shoreline cover like shallow grass, lily pads, laydowns, riprap, docks, pretty much anywhere that they can ambush their prey like bluegill, shad, or crawfish. And normally you can catch fish as well out deep when you have these pre-front conditions because you'll have a strong wind and you'll have the cloud cover which will get those offshore bass really active as well. And so pretty much you can pick your poison in the pre-front conditions in the post spawn and throughout the summer and you're going to be able to put some big fish in the boat. And then as that front begins to move through, the temperatures will begin to drop and you'll get that heavy rain and potentially thunderstorms and lightning. And again, I would take cover if you see any lightning or hear any thunder in your area. But if you do just have a little bit of thunder or lightning in your area, but you can still fish, it will still affect the bass in a weird way, which I didn't really know about until recently. So if you do have a lightning or thunderstorm that rolls over your lake really fast, maybe it's only over your lake for 20 or 30 minutes, a lot of times that will kill any top water bite or shallow water bite that you have going on in your lake. And for whatever reason, those bass will get spooked by the lightning and the thunder. And if you're catching them really well in a frog or a buzz bait or something like that, right before the front rolls through, a lot of times that bite will completely die. And you may have to slow down and fish bottom baits, flipping a jig, or maybe even going and fishing offshore to get those fish to bite. Or you may have to wait two or three hours till after that thunderstorm rolls through for those bass to continue to feed on top. And then after that front passes and you enter the post front conditions in the summertime, the bite can still be really good. And that's because you'll sometimes still have some strong wind after a front and that wind will keep those offshore fish active because it'll push some current through the lake and get those fish positioned up on top of any kind of drops you can fish. And also, if it takes a while for the clouds to dissipate, you can still have some really good top water bites or some shallow bites up in the shallow cover as long as you have a few clouds left in the sky after that front. And actually the toughest thing about adapting to frontal conditions in the summertime is dealing with the second day after a front. And this is the same in the spring and in the fall and the winter as well, because normally on the second day after a front, you're not going to have nearly as much wind as the first day after the front. So you'll have slick, calm conditions, no wind, that sun will be out, but the temperatures are still going to be a little bit cooler. And so there's no good conditions to get those fish to actively feed, no clouds, no wind, no rain. But at the same time, you're still going to be dealing with those little bit cooler conditions, which may get those fish a little bit thrown off the regular routine, especially in the spring. And so when I am facing the second day after a cold front, a lot of times I have to slow down, maybe pick up a finesse lure like a drop shot or a shaky head and really fish 
slow in the same areas where I was catching them, again, in the pre-front and the post-front conditions, maybe mixing up both shallow and deep, but I really am gonna have to slow down and finesse my way around to put fish in the boat. So next up we have the fall, and frontal conditions will affect bass in the fall pretty strongly as well, just like they do in the spring, because you're gonna have really big drops in temperature from warm weather to cool weather, as you have the first cold days happening each year. And the way you adapt to pre-front and post-front conditions in the fall is really similar to how you would do it in the spring. And again, I'm just going to use an example of a two-day tournament I fished during my college fishing days on Lake Uchi in Oklahoma. And again, I don't have any footage from that day, but I do have some footage from recently where I fished two days in a row with a cold front. So I'll use that footage to kind of prove my point. So for this tournament, we were fishing in the middle of September, and we were fishing the weekend of the first big cold front of the year. And Saturday, we were fishing in pre-front conditions, and Sunday, we were fishing in post-front conditions. And on Saturday, my partner and I caught some fish really well in a buzzbait up in shallow grass because there was a lot of wind, there was cloud cover, and the conditions were warm. And we caught about 15 pounds up shallow on a buzzbait. And the tournament was actually one offshore, and the guy was deep cranking brush piles, and he caught two six pounders out there. And so in the fall, you can normally catch again some fish up shallow and out deep really well, just like you can in the summer, because that wind will get those fish active both shallow and deep. But then the night after the first day of the tournament, the cold front rolled through and it dropped air temperatures about 35 degrees and we were dealing with 40 degree air temperatures and the water temperature dropped five or six degrees overnight and the shallow fish that my partner and I were catching on the buzz bait completely vanished and we were expecting this and actually practiced offshore in the event of this cold front coming through. So the next morning, my partner and I started cranking offshore on some deep brush piles because that's how we'd heard the tournament was won the day before. This is just a little club tournament, so everyone was sharing what they were doing. And we started out there and didn't get any bites. And we realized pretty quickly that that brush pile bite had kind of died because the brush piles were a little bit shallower and they weren't really very thick. And so as that cold weather came through, the fish would actually pull from that brush to some of the rockier, thicker rock ledges that were all around the lake. So after about two or three hours, we made the adjustment and started fishing some of those rocky ledges with a football jig and it ended up catching 12 pounds for four bass and actually jumped off three three pounders. And we should have had 15 pounds if we had put those fish in the boat, just like the day before. And we actually finished second, the second day of the tournament and we finished second the first day of the tournament fishing two completely different patterns. The first day up shallow on a buzz bait, and the second day offshore on a football jig. And so we definitely made the right adjustments from the pre-front to the post-front conditions and caught fish just as well both days. But again, we had to make significant adjustments. And the guys who actually won the tournament the day before ended up only catching one fish and finished like 10th place because they didn't make that adjustment. And so if you want to be a consistent fisherman and catch fish consistently day after day, you have to learn how to make these adjustments on the fly and also prepare for these adjustments in your practice days to know that if there's a cold front rolling, rolling through, you have some backup areas in case your fish that were feeding up shallow make a move. So then finally we have the winter time and pretty much the way you adapt to pre-front and post-front conditions are the same in the winter so I'm not really going to go into it too deeply. What I will say is that the frontal conditions don't affect the bass nearly as much in the winter just because it's already going to be cold and a lot of times the water temperatures are already freezing and these bass don't really seem to care too much if water temperatures drop from 48 degrees down to 45 degrees. So that's pretty much it. Those are the ways that frontal conditions affect bass in the different seasons of the year and how you can adapt to pre-front, during front, and post-front conditions to consistently put bass in the boat time after time when you go fishing. So if you're still here at the end of this long video, I highly recommend that you subscribe to my channel to get more content and also share the video out with a friend if you think they would enjoy. It's the best way to support my content and to help grow my channel. And if you do want to leave a comment down below and ask me any questions, feel free and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. Though I have a lot of comments coming through nowadays, so it may take me a few days to get to your comment. But other than that, Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about how to adapt to frontal conditions to catch bass consistently. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.